So RFK Jr., who, again, I know that there are some conservatives who are never Trumpers who are like, well, I can't vote for Joe Biden, so I think I'm going to vote for RFK. I think he's my guy. And these people are constantly hitting on Donald Trump for um, his inconsistencies with the pro-life agenda, which I agree he has said some things that I don't love. However, he also with his record, is the most pro-life president of our lifetime. He appointed Supreme Court justices who overturned Roe versus Wade. So there's Donald Trump talking, and sometimes he says things that he doesn't mean or says, the, you know, he has verbal diarrhea, okay? So there's Donald Trump talking offhand, or there's Donald Trump in office creating policy or uh, nominating Supreme Court justices who are going to overturn bad legislation. We need to separate those two Donald Trumps, all right? So these same people who talk about Donald Trump's pro-life inconsistencies are talking about voting for RFK Jr. Well, RFK Jr. has just recently said with Sage Steele um, that women should be allowed to have abortion even if it's full term. His words, not mine. Watch. But so to leave, so, so in other words, keeping it as is with Roe versus Wade having been overturned and leaving it up to the states to determine if and when a woman can have an abortion? No, I wouldn't leave it to the states. You wouldn't, right. No, I would. I, he would I, say completely, it's up to know, the woman. I believe is the, we should leave it to the woman. We shouldn't have government involved. Even if it's full term? Even if it's full term. Okay. He said it, not me. Even if it's full term, a woman has a right to choose. She has medical autonomy of her body. Well, I mean, there's just one small problem. It's not her body. It's the baby's, who is, of course, a living, breathing human. And even if it's full term, well, if it's full term, it could survive on its own. You just deliver the baby and you deliver it alive instead of dead. That's how this process works. So he is, there, there's no, I mean, because he said that, you can't, we don't even need to have the argument of when is life, when does it begin? Well, at 16 weeks, is it really well, but the heart's not beating? Well, it's not fully formed. Even if it's full term, he is clearly advocating for murder of babies. I don't see any other way to describe that. Do I have that off somehow? If people are angry about Christy Gnome's yeah. shooting of the dog. Right. I don't know what to say about this. I mean, that's it. it's over for him, in my opinion. I mean, that's just a horrendous position to take. I it's just a horrendous position to take. I certainly haven't heard Donald Trump uttering words anywhere remotely close to that. The anti-abortion thing with Trump is one of the most illiterate things that I've seen recently uh, from people who claim to be pro-life. And the reason behind it, I mean, this was the same play. You have to understand, as good as the government and intelligence agencies are at like running, you know, psyops or propaganda campaigns, the NGOs and the activists and the lobbyists, that's like their bread and butter. And they ran this play in 2015. They ran it now and probably even maybe a little in 2020. But it's this idea that if you can alienate alienate evangelical voters who are one of Trump's, actually Trump's most reliable demographic, well, then you can kneecap his campaign and hurt his chances in the election. And so these people are networked with all the pro-life influencers, not all of them. There are a lot of them who are doing good work. But you have to understand when you see rhetoric with these people coming out of Donald Trump saying that, you know, he's actually not pro-life and he is, you know, crisscross on his, his position with abortion, that is all meant to create a circumstance where Trump's campaign can either fail or be usurped because the whole crown jewel of pro-life activism for 50 years was we have to overturn Roe v. Wade and then we have to give it back to the states. That was their North Star. Trump facilitated the conditions for that to happen. Nobody else could have done it. I'm sorry, but Ted Cruz would not have won in 2016. The type of turnout that Trump got in the Rust Belt, that, that would not have happened for Senator Ted Cruz. It was only Donald Trump and only Donald Trump could have appointed those justices like he said he would. Every other president, by the way, when they're running for president, they never said the words, I am going to appoint pro-life justices who will overturn Roe v. Wade. They say, well, I'm going to appoint justices who are uh, originalist or who are textualists, unbiased or whatever. Trump, and he probably didn't do this purposefully. He probably did it because he you know, sometimes doesn't. He's, Trump. he's just like, he just yeah, lost. straight up, I'm appointing them. They're overturning Roe v. Wade. And then he actually did it. So the thing is, and, and this is like very controversial to say on our side, because obviously we're pro-life, but it is a form of right-wing virtue signaling. I'm sorry to get up on stage in front of a crowd and you make a million dollars a year by giving speeches saying that killing babies is wrong. So true. 
what now? Do you want to stop that from happening or do you want to live a cushy lifestyle? I mean, it's good work if you can get it. You get to black cars, cocktail parties, rub shoulders, but you're actually not on net saving lives. What saves lives, unfortunately, is winning elections. I wish we could snap our fingers and make it stop, but you have to win elections. That's the way the system works. And you don't win elections by getting up there and telling people because unfortunately, American culture, as I'm sure we all know, is not very pro-life. It's very just depraved and, and degenerated. And so you kind of do have to play ball a little bit. I mean, Trump didn't make abortion the center of his campaign. He was focused on nationalist policies, trade policy, immigration policy, foreign policy. And then he had that as an accessory of his campaign to sort of, you know, throw the evangelicals what they need. And then he promises made, promises kept. He actually did it. But if you come out there when you're running for a national election and start talking about a federal abortion ban, well, now you're not going to win an election. And then the Democrats are going to get in and they're going to amnesty however many tens of millions of people are here. And then Republicans are never going to win an election again. That's and true. so then what's going to happen to the kids then? I mean, you're so pro-life. What happens then? And then it just keeps going. So well, it, it's, you're absolutely right. And I think what I would like for people to remember is Donald Trump's recent remarks on um, abortion just align with what the Supreme Court said, right? Like, that's it. So if you want to hit him on it, okay, I guess hit the Supreme Court on the same thing because he's just reiterating what the Supreme Court said, which is that it should be up to the states to choose. So let's pick one because it was a win when the, to John's point, it was a huge win when the Supreme Court said it. And now the same guy who brought us that win says the same thing that the Supreme Court is saying. And everyone's like, I can't believe how anti-life he is. And it's like, I, I just, I just don't, I don't agree with the criticism. I, I think that it was unfortunate what he said, but I don't agree that like somehow he is not pro-life. Adding to that, I think we have 26 or 27 Republican governors right now. Why are these activists not putting pressures on these Republican governors who all have, for the most part, significant majorities in both chambers of state Congress? Because that's how you could act. I mean, the ball's in your court. Mm -hmm. Pass the ban. Why not do it? They want to put all of that against Trump. Well, it's his fault. He won't pass a federal ban or whatever. It's like, what are you talking about, dude? You asked for it. He gave it to you. So do it. Do your job. Right. But they don't want to because a lot of these influencers and these activists are never Trumpers who happen to be pro-life. And they're trying to use that platform to kneecap his campaign, which is expected by all metrics to succeed come November. Yeah. Um, also on RFK, you can't you can't vote for a guy who's had a brain worm which apparently he had. Uh, he said doctors found a dead worm in his brain after he was experiencing severe memory loss and mental fogginess. And so they thought that he had a brain tumor. And then they were like, no, actually, it's just a dead parasite in your brain. That's wild. It gives me the, the ick. <laughs> yeah. Very much the ick. Um, so apparently he's fine now. And they said that they thought that um, it was a pork tapeworm larva, which I didn't know existed or that you could get it and now i'm terrified that's all that's all i have to say about well it's that. good if you if joe biden i mean because he would have a like it'd be like moving into a massive penthouse apartment because there's nothing in his right mind. right there's nothing in his head Very open floor plan be like that. This is not open floor. <laughs> can i just say this sarah as well yeah are people ever going to figure out that trump negotiates as well it's yeah. the way he does things he's not a regular politician so he'll say like you know little rocket man you know this and then guess what he comes all the way over here mm -hmm. and then he ends up about here right right it's just the way he is and by the way if you want someone who is moral right to give you moral guidance go to your pastor go to your yeah. priest yeah. Yeah. right w what are you doing like you're sitting there going oh well you know because this politician over here says this they all lie <laughs> they're all lying to you right. right he's been and we've said this over and over he's the most transparent p president yes. in history yes. because what he thinks it's just, it just comes out of his mouth. There's no filter. Yeah. So we should appreciate that, right? right and right. not hammer him on these things. Yeah, That's I, so true. Everyone's I'm always so mad true. at me. And they're like, you're such a Trump cultist. And it's like, I've never once said, wow, I love Trump. He inspires me to be such a good husband. It's like, I like him because he can move the ball down the field. It's exactly as you said. If you want moral guidance, go to church. Yeah. Go to your father or something like that. Yeah. If you like this clip and you want to see the full episode, click here. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, come on. You know you do. Click here.